Sutton Show. Brought to you by Farm Fresh. You can almost taste the sunshine and the good things from Farm Fresh. By Southwest Airlines. Offering everyday low fares and convenient flights to many exciting destinations. And by the Hudeberg Auto Group. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins, and never in the history of Oklahoma State basketball have the Cowboys started so fast, 17-0, and Eddie, I'm safe to say, I believe that never in the history of the program has there been quite a reception like you got after the big Oklahoma win on Monday night. Well, that was uh, re very refreshing to our players because I don't think any of them had ever seen anything like that. As we got back into Stillwater about 1.30 in the morning, we were stopped out the wedge, west ed edge of town by the... Uh, police and they said we've got a mini riot on our hands <laughs> and uh, they were right but it was a very well behaved group of students and we had about 2,500, 3,000 waiting for us when we got to Gallagher Ive Arena. It took us about 15 minutes to get from the bus into the arena but uh, very appreciative. Uh, first time we'd beaten the University of Oklahoma and Norman I guess in 11 years so they were excited and uh, big win for us. Maybe the most remarkable thing of all of that is that uh, because the game was nationally televised, you all did not arrive into Stillwater until after 1.30 in the morning. It was in early in the morning, and then, uh, of course, uh, I guess this all started it's just as soon as the game was over. Everybody tells me that the students rushed out of the living areas, the fraternities and sororities, and, and uh, started jumping in their cars and driving up and down the street. And one of the policemen told me, he said, we had streakers, we had people diving <laughs> in Theta Pond swimming, and... So uh, the students got quite excited, and as I said, big win for us because uh, a very important game as far as the conference. The game itself probably had more buildup than uh, any contest has had for a long while. 41 years to the exact day, uh, Oklahoma State took a 16-0 and record into Norman, and they were beaten 44-40. to And of course, for this game, uh, it was nationally televised in Sports Illustrated and Los Angeles Times and the... New York Times, all, all the media people were there, and it was a great basketball game. If you weren't emotionally involved uh, and you were just a basketball junkie, you would have enjoyed that ball game. Well, Eddie, we won't show any of the streakers, but we will show more of the celebration a little bit later on. We'll also show you the highlights from that OU game at Iowa State coming up next. Stay with us. Nope. I tell my team, and I believe it, the people who really succeed in this world are the people who take the time and effort not just to do the big things better, but to do the little things better than anyone else. That takes more than talent, more than dedication. It takes total commitment, and it's a part of every superstar's success story, including this one, Farm Fresh. Welcome back to the program. The Cowboys looking after their looking for their 26th straight home win on Saturday against Iowa State, Coach. Tough Iowa State ball club. Johnny Orr's got a team that uh, will be in the NCAA tournament uh, at the end of the year. Uh, we came out. We set up a play right at the beginning. Back screen, Byron on the opening tip. Uh, Sean made a good pass, and we get the first two bas uh, points of the game. And here, Sean runs through a pass. That we're always talking about overplaying and playing the passing lanes, and that's a good example. And at that point, with a four-zip lead, the crowd went bananas. One of the outstanding crowds we've had. Good high-low pass from Bryant Reeves down to Byron Houston. Byron, another big game. 34 points, nine rebounds on the afternoon. He did have a sensational game. Good hustle play here. Defense forced a turnover. We got the numbers. And Sean makes a nice lead pass to Davis. Sean throws that pass very well. Likes to use the lob off the break. Has a good touch on, on the ball. Good two-on-one fast break here. Alexander off to Milt Brown. And that's the way you uh, practice the, the two-on-one break. Some of the national sportscasters now saying Gallagher, Iowa, perhaps the toughest place to say in America. You've been thinking that all along. It's one of the toughest uh, for the visiting team. Good bank shot uh, from Cor Cornell Hatcher. Anytime you have the angle of the board like he had and you're in 15 feet, you ought to use the glass. Good drive here down the baseline. Great follow shot by Reeves. You like him playing physical, don't you? We hope he'll get more <laughs> physical. That's one of the things that will allow him to uh, continue to improve. 
Speaking of physical, Byron Houston once again, and uh, we got here. Our, Speaking uh, of bank shots, <laughs> <laughs> one of our great uh, fans, one of our students. Another nice two-on-one fast break, and Byron uh, led our ball club, but we had uh, some other people that certainly contributed in this game. We'll take a look a little bit later at the Big 8 standings. Certainly playing a game like this, one you need to win at home. You can afford a loss occasionally uh, in Big 8 play at home, but certainly not against an Iowa State. You hope to win this one, and you do. You play very, very well. Well, the crowd, uh, we mentioned that. They played the part of the sixth man, and Gallagher-Iva is one of the uh, old 10 toughest places for the visitors to win. In this ball game, we shot 57%, uh, held them to below 50%. And there's a shot uh, at the end of the game. Uh, Johnny coached Corey Williams uh, one summer on, a, on an all-star yeah. team over in Europe and has a lot of affection for him. And uh, Johnny uh, thinks that his ball club, this is the best one he's had for a long time, and I agree with him. Next up, Oklahoma. It was the big Monday game, and it was exactly that. Uh, maybe Mammoth Monday is what it was being billed. And as you mentioned, you had not won in Norman in 11 years, only two true road games before this one, but you came out and played very, very well. Well, very enthusiastic crowd, very well-behaved crowd on the part of the uh, fans, of which were mostly uh, Sooner people. We had a lot of people there, but not as many as they did. This is early in the game, and Oklahoma hit everything they threw up there for a while, and here's Darwin Alexander. He hits a three, and just before that shot, it hit a three, and now the game's tied at 17. You obviously didn't slow the game. You didn't uh, slow play the game, but you got it back under control. Oklahoma had its tempo early. Well, anytime a uh, team presses you and they pressed right from the opening tip off, you've got to attack the press. Uh, you never want to be content just to take the ball across the midcourt line. And uh, anytime that uh, you do take it through, you're going to get some uh, baskets at the back end of the press, and we were able to do that. But the tempo was a little too fast for us early. And your defense played very, very well again, holding Oklahoma to 41%. You'll win a bunch of games playing that type of defense. There was a great example of passing the ball well against the press and, and end up with an easy two points. And there's an example of good defense. Sean intercepts. That's the beginning of the second half. Coach, you went in as an eight point, uh, leading by eight points and uh, had it in good shape. Oklahoma made a run at you and down the stretch after Byron Houston was on the bench, he came in for a couple of big buckets. Well... Oklahoma played at a high level of intensity, and so did we. But it was a big game for both ball clubs, and uh, if you're going to grade uh, teams on effort, both teams would have got an A-plus. There's a shot of our governor, Governor Walters. He was in attendance. Another good defensive play by Cornell, and you can see we're, we're off and running, and a flush shot by uh, Davis. We... Uh, shot the highest percentage we've shot I think for the season in this ball game uh, 63 percent we also converted a free throw 79 percent and I want to give a lot of credit to Darwin and Corey they played very well in fact I thought Darwin played the best game that he's played since I came to Oklahoma State and along with Sean those three guards at a time when our big guys were in foul trouble they displayed a, a lot of poise and uh, we were able to win there's a shot of my wife, Patsy, and Carolyn Evans, uh, the wife of Rob Evans, one of my assistant coaches. And we'll see one of the key plays to begin in the game a little bit later coming up. Brent Price misses a shot at the buzzer that would have sent the game into overtime, and the celebration is on. Watch this right here. That's how strong Byron Houston is. He, he's got Sean, and uh, he's almost like he's holding a little child. But I've never seen a basketball team any more excited over just a regular season game than our team was. Uh, I've seen ball clubs that I've coached that were excited when you're in the NCAA playoffs or when you, you uh, clinch a uh, league championship. But the game meant a lot to our, our seniors because Darwin, Byron, and Corey had never beaten the Sooners down in Norman. And that was one of the goals this year was to beat OU at their place. So they were quite excited and a big win for us. You know, uh, the Big 8 race, we, we'll probably talk about a little bit later, but Kansas got a big uh, step on everybody by beating Missouri at Columbia and then going to Boulder. So we've got to go on the road and win some ball games if uh, we're going to uh, compete for the championship. And this was a big win as far as that was concerned. You know, Coach, you have to feel confident anytime you play, particularly when you go on the road in a hostile environment. I spoke with the, your assistant, Bill Self, before the ball game, and he said this was the most confident he could remember Oklahoma State being going into the game. Actually, felt you would win, whereas in the past you would go down. The team would go down hoping to win. Is that accurate? I think it's very accurate. Uh, when you have five seniors and uh, you've had the success that they've enjoyed uh, in the year and a half 
uh, you know, they believe they can beat anybody, and uh, I don't think the home crowd really bothers them that much. Uh, in that particular ball game, I felt like our team was really focused in, even from the time we arrived in Norman the day before. I, they, they were really felt, uh, I felt like they were on a mission, and that's uh, the, kind of the expression that uh, you might read on their faces. All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we will show you the Southwest Airlines Play of the Week, and it's from that Oklahoma game. Stay with us. Everyone has to know exactly where they're supposed to be and exactly what they're supposed to be doing because there are people out there depending on them. That's why they call it a team. And when you get a bunch of good people together who like what they're doing and who have the skill and patience and desire to become team players, well, you've got a winning team like this one. Farm Fresh, the winningest team in this part of the country. Day of the week is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Oklahoma leading 98, excuse me, Oklahoma State leading 989, 31 seconds remaining. Coach, take it over. Well, we, we're coming down. We're going to try to spread the floor, and you can see Sean beats the press. Let's freeze it right there. Now you can see, you hear the term a lot of times, spacing, and what you're doing here is to try to get your ball club to be all. 18 to 22 feet from each other where it's very hard to double up on the part of the defense and you can see out in front there's three players we've got one over here and we got one back on the baseline so a great job of spreading the floor not allowing them an opportunity to really double up and foul and I'm sure coach Tubbs and their staff was yelling for them to foul to stop the clock and they don't foul until uh, there's only five seconds left right here Darwin Alexander is going to receive the ball right here and finally they catch up and foul him. And of course, he converted the two free throws. That made it 92 to 89. Now it's very difficult to get the ball up the floor in five seconds and get a decent shot. But uh, Brent Price got one from the top of the circle and it had a chance to go in. And I don't believe anyone could have handled another, uh, handled an overtime. I think the crowd was exhausted, the players were exhausted, and the coaches were exhausted. But a great college game. And fortunately, we won the game. Uh, in a situation like that, it's just too bad that somebody has to lose. All right, we'll take a short break, and we'll come back. We'll see more of that celebration in Stillwater after the big win. <music> Coach's corner and uh, more celebration, Eddie. Well, normally we have a play within the game, but I thought this was so neat. <laughs> I told our uh, team that uh, there are a lot of teams that go through their complete collegiate career and nothing like this ever happens. Uh, the last time I can remember, and I'm sure it's happened uh, since then, but when we beat the University of Kansas in 1957, they had Will Chamberlain, there was a, a, a similar scene like this. The crowd erupted. In fact, that particular year, they called off school, and in this uh, celebration here, the, the uh, students, when we got off, said, call off school, call off school. <laughs> and uh, they had a great time, but well behaved. The police handled it very well. And uh, they, too, agreed that our students were excited, but uh, they did it in a very uh, healthy manner. Not many times do you see, hear sirens and see the lights whizzing, and it uh, is good news like this. One other story, Coach, there was a little serenade down in Norman the night before the game. Well, the OU students were quite excited, too. And about midnight, uh, just prior to the game, we're getting ready to go to bed, and all of a sudden we hear Boomer Sooner outside of uh, our hotel and their pep band had come down to, I guess, to serenade us. Our players really got a bang out of that. And I think it really helped uh, them understand what's so neat about uh, a great rivalry like OU and Oklahoma State. All right, we'll take a break and come back and look at Big A standings and schedule and a lot more. Stay with us. And welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Let's get caught up on the Big 8 standings and schedule and results. Taking a look first at the results from last week. Oklahoma State, of course, with the big win over Iowa State. Eddie, Missouri, a winner over Nebraska. Kansas, one point over Colorado. Oklahoma, big at Kansas State. And, of course, the big ball game on Monday, your win at Oklahoma. Well, you know, what we found so far in nine conference games, there's only been three home uh, teams win. We won two games over uh, Kansas State and Iowa State, and Iowa State defeated the Sooners in Ames. So very unusual. 
believe me, that won't continue to happen. Those home teams are going to start winning. As for the standings in the Big 8, the Cowboys 17-0 overall, 3-0 in conference, Kansas 2-0. Nebraska next, Iowa State, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas State, Colorado. Many surprises there to you? No, not really. It's too early in the year, but look at those uh, overall uh, records over there. Unbelievable. Big 8 uh, has the best percentage of any conference in college basketball. No doubt, I think everybody from coast to coast right now feels that the Big 8 is the toughest from top to bottom. Are you looking at uh, perhaps five teams for the balance of the year, top 25? Is that asking Well, I hope right? so. Uh, right now, if the NCAA tournament were to be held, I, I really believe you'd have six teams in the uh, NCAA wow. field. Uh, the best it's ever been. All right, the upcoming Big 8 schedule we have for you, and there you see Oklahoma State at Oral Roberts, 735, Kansas State at Iowa State, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. That's next Monday night, big Monday, and I tell you, that has really helped the Big 8 uh, having those games on Monday evening. That's the best time slot you can have because uh, on the West Coast it's 630, the Mountain 730, Central 830, East Coast 930. So anyone that loves basketball, college basketball, they have a chance to see it. Best time slot we could ever hope to have. We're pleased to continue our feature on the history of basketball. Tonight we show you the very first basketball game. Would basketball be as popular today if it was known as boxball? Well, on December 21st, 1891, its inventor, Dr. James Naismith, was on a collision course with just that proposition. With a soccer ball under his arm, he began his search through the YMCA for the perfect goal. He envisioned boxes, about 18 inches square. But the superintendent of buildings, Mr. Steppens, could only find two peach baskets, a little larger at the top than at the bottom, and about 15 inches across. Dr. Naismith nailed a basket to the lower rail of the balcony at each end of the gymnasium, 10 feet in the air, the exact distance from the floor to the railing. Then he chose two captains and his class of 18 became teams of nine. Naismith tapped two men to jump center and the first ball was tossed up on a court some 35 by 50 feet long. There were plenty of fouls, the defense prevailed, and only one goal was scored, but the doctor had delivered as promised this new game with no name was an instant success. And the rest is history. Uh, basketball has never been this popular. Coach, looking ahead, two big, big, two games before we meet next week. And if you win these two, you will become only the third team in Big 8 history to be undefeated at this point in the season, non -con or to go through the entire season in non-conference undefeated. Well, we hope we can pull that off, but we know it's not going to be easy because when you're ranked, those non-conference opponents really come at you. They play harder than they do against other people. And, of course, the game Saturday night at uh, maybe uh, center there in Tulsa uh, is close to being a sellout. There's still a few tickets left, and if people in uh, Tulsa or eastern Oklahoma would like to purchase a ticket, they can call our ticket office. Uh, Coach Tricky's got a good ball club. Uh, they had to go on the road and play so many games that it was very difficult for them to win. But they do have some impressive wins uh, on their record. We know they're going to be tough. And then Tuesday night, we travel down to play uh, in a place where I've uh, taken the Razorbacks many times, a Moody uh, Coliseum there on the campus of SMU. And uh, SMU's got a nice basketball team. And so it's difficult for us from the standpoint we know we're facing two teams that have everything to gain, nothing to lose. But... Uh, we're also in between conference games after the big emotional win over Oklahoma. We don't play again until we play Missouri uh, a week from this Sunday. So uh, I hope our ball club is mature enough to realize that what has made basketball the most popular sport in the world is the fact that when five guys put on their sneakers and they go out there and play, they play hard, anything can happen. And, and certainly ORU and SMU will be up to the uh, task of trying to upset us. I've had a lot of people ask me about uh, Eddie Sutton recently. They want to know about the voice. Now, put them at ease. You're fine. In fact, I'm you're fine. better before practice yesterday. Well, that, you're exactly right. <laughs> you know, I went to the doctor because uh, Dr. Cooper, our team physician, said, you know, uh, a lot of people were concerned about my voice, and this has never happened to me before. I've gotten uh, hoarse at times, but never would it last this long. And I told the team, I said, if you guys would play better, my voice would be better. But I went to the doctor. He said, I'm fine. He said, it's just like... If you continue to walk on a sprained ankle, he said it's not going to heal. And uh, I go to practice. I, I say to myself, now, I'm not going to 
use my voice and then all of a sudden I'll see something that's not going exactly right and then I jump up and, and we had a practice yesterday where I did get on uh, a big country a little bit and a couple of the other players and uh, so my, I am a little hoarse today but I am feeling fine especially uh, when you're 17 and 0 and ranked third in the country. We just have a couple of seconds. You've said before, number three, you've been overranked. Are you still overranked? We're getting uh, closer to being <laughs> ranked where we should be, I guess. That, that win over OU was a great win for us. All right, congratulations, and we'll see you next week, Coach. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching. See you next week on The Eddie Sutton Show. The Eddie Sutton Show has been brought to you by Farm Fresh. You can almost taste the sunshine and the good things from Farm Fresh.